And now, same day, just filmed Andy Cooper, not just, but doing a lot of research. But I figure I get Stanley Kovaleski out of the way. Not a rare autograph at all. Uh, it's interesting about him. He was one of the last remaining spitball pitchers left in Major League Baseball legally. So anyone that's really familiar with the game know eventually, I forgot in what year, in the 20s, they basically, they outlawed spitballs pitching. But they said, listen, the grandfather, the spitball pitchers that were still pitching they allow them to keep doing it and so him and like rube marquardt i believe like were some of the last spitball pitchers left that were grandfathered in and they eventually made the hall of fame his record is not like earth shattering i mean he was 215 and 142 with a 2.8 er 2.89 era and less than a thousand strikeouts but his philosophy was, listen, why should I pitch eight, nine pitches to get a strikeout when I could pitch four or five pitches and get them to hit a grounder because of the spitball? So to each their own. Regardless, he's in the Hall of Fame. He lived to the ripe old age of 94. He was always a very accommodating signer. So what's interesting about him, and Jim Stinson has told a story many times that, again, he was still around, not when like public signings were happening, but when people would actually go to the Hall of Famer's house and get stuff's autographed, and Jim Stinson, again, famous autograph dealer, probably one of the most renowned still living, we would go to his house and they would have him sign stuff and he could sign his name. He knew how to sign his name, not beautifully. We'll look in a second. But he knew how to sign his name. And but whenever there was an inscription, he said he would hand it over to his wife. His wife actually do all the inscribing. Because he didn't know how to, they thought he was illiterate besides his name. So a couple of years ago, 2018, there was an auction on eBay for all his like personal collection, like or a lot of it. And so I'll show you that in a minute. And I couldn't believe it. And in that was, believe it or not, a fully written postcard, which I'll get, I'll get to in a second. So without any further ado, let's look at the autograph of Stanley Kovalinsky. So this is the PSA database, and I wanted to, this is a very common thing here. So what happens is people would write him in letters, and his wife would read the letter, write the response back to him, and he would just sign it. So you could tell just looking at this, it's a very feminine hand, nice cursive and, any, and everything like that. And at the bottom here, is, there's a, I don't want to say a sloppy autograph, but a common Stanley Kovaleski autograph. And again, you're looking for the... The big thing is the slant to the right, and you're looking for this coming up when the C and the arch, and sometimes he loops it around, sometimes he doesn't. As he got older, that the Kovaleski would start to lean upwards. Again, let's we can keep going right here. Again, this looks like obviously an endorsed check from looks like 1970. Again, very common signature right here. You can see again, there's not too much to go into because there's really not much forged about him. Again, if you're looking for a really nice signature, though, again, you're looking for that nice S, the nice C. I like to see that little, like, lowercase E inside the C. It's not that common. I mean, it's not that rare or common with or without. You can definitely see autographs out there that are very different than that. But you can see what you like right here is your autograph flows upward. It's not on a even level plane. So, again, going up here, again, you're seeing the same thing here, capital S, capital C, the nice E. Even here, you can see it's going up here. It's very nice. He's, you're seeing every single letter of his name. Again, we're getting a little bit later in life here, towards the end of his life here. he lived. This is late 80s, and it was still a nice autograph. Again, he's still got the nice E inside, and you see how the Kovaleski is flowing upwards. Again, now this one is one of the nicer ones. you got a Social Security card. And again, I mean... Same thing, though, you can see the E wrapped around. Obviously, this is an official document. So an autograph just on a plain note card goes for about 15 bucks. And I owned one for the longest time. And I'm like, I want something nicer. And so, again, this lot popped up with all these personal things. And in it was this Social Security card. Like, this is really cool. And, again, it's a, the S is not perfect, granted. But, again, it's not just a regular index card. It's something really unique to him. So, and again, he's even got the, the legal name of his spelling and everything. Yes, you can see your social security number now. And again, it has everything you want in an autograph. And I knew he signed it. And it was just something different. It's back here on my wall of fame. It's uh, it's right over there. I'm looking at it right now. And it's one of my more enjoyable autographs, to be honest, even though, 
like I said, it's not a rare autograph at all. So like I said, I got this with the lot. In the lot was this postcard. And everyone thought like, and again, including Jim Stinson, that this guy was illiterate. So now in this lot was from 1914, this postcard. And again, you could see it like he spells season, like he spells his ass. you at the nice, everything's leaning. I probably would have kept this autograph if not for the fact that, if you, let me go out here. He, he didn't sign, like you can see his full name, Stanley Kovaleski. He just signed his first name only. So, uh, yeah, I sold it. But I got a pretty penny for a $15 autograph. You can see it sold for $810. And there was a lot of other stuff in the auction lot. So I took this to REA, the rest, honestly, I don't talk much about stuff I buy and sell, but this is kind of cool. So this, I took the rest of the like love of the game. And like, this is cool. Like this is what I had for a time. I had his marriage license and look how he spelled his name. Kowaleski. You know what I'm saying? He stands the law Kowaleski. So I've never seen his name spelled like that before, but he married, uh, Believe it or not, his sister-in-law. So, like, this is, like, some really cool stuff. We can go more into this right here. Like, here's this, like, Blue Cross card. Again, not signed or else maybe I would have kept it. Some note cards. Some pictures of him. Some signed photos of him. Older signed photos. Just a lot of just interesting, cool stuff in here. So, again, you're not going to pay a lot for him. Except, again, when you get to the signed baseballs. He died, what, 1984, I believe. So, Again, this is a nice baseball. It was common that he signed in a felt tip pin like that. And so you can see $545. So, again, not a terribly expensive autograph. Again, unless you're going for the baseballs, you're going to spend a couple hundred. Uh, the press deals are out there also. Expect to spend a couple hundred on that. One thing I want to point out is someone, I'm not going to mention who, posted a ball that he bought of Stanley Kovaleski. And on the side, I wrote, like, Hall of Fame 1975. And these induction baseballs now, if you're paying attention to the market, have exploded. And I wrote the person. I'm like, listen, his wife wrote that. I'm like, I don't want to be a bummer. I'm not sorry to writing a parade. I kind of explained a little bit of a history that he st really stopped writing in the 19, looks like 1920s, 1930s. And the, the Hall of Fame was like beautifully signed and inscribed. No question it was the wife's signature. And I wrote him. I was like, just be careful with there because this guy is a reseller. He's very famous. And he wrote me back. He said, JSA passed it, so I'm selling it. So I was like, what? He sold it privately. He goes, I'm sorry. He said, JSA pre-approved it. They're coming to my house to look for it. And I think they're going to pass it. And it was something to that effect. I'm not quoting you exactly. So this is why you can't always trust the TPAs. So especially like a Stanley Kovaleski. It's not like I don't think that the common person working at a JSA knows. like Because it's a common autograph. But, like, the inscriptions are very rare. They're borderline non-existent. So, but I don't know just the average person in JSA knows that. And so by assuming it passed, if he passed this ball, he probably at least added a couple thousand dollars to this baseball. Such a baseball didn't exist with an inscription like that. And sure enough, JSA passed it. And that's one of my, like, soapbox issues these days. It's like I like I don't know if you've seen Misery of like Annie Wilkes from Misery. It's not a freaking inscription. So, but anyways, getting off my soapbox. Just be careful out there. But again, we are moving on. After this is Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox is not well, but as far as I know, he's still alive. So, which is always good. Uh, but until then, as always, keep collecting.